I think the best way to put it is what is, a, is the phrase that Scott has used from the earliest meetings we had with him, which is a mind trip action film uh, about a, a character going on this amazing journey of self-discovery. It's amazing because you know we shot the film here, so it feels surreal to be back here, and to be here it feels extra surreal. But the full circle aspect of coming back, uh, seeing some members of the crew is amazing. And by coincidence, our hotel where we're staying is literally on the street of the, where the opening of the movie takes place. So it's just a lot of a lot of surrealness to go along with the theme of the film, I guess. We knew we wanted to, 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 to push boundaries, right? I mean, the early days of the comics, it was always really different. And Steve Ditko was an amazing artist who pushed visual boundaries. And we knew that if we were going to pull this movie off, we had to take risks, we had to do bold things with the action, with, with the, uh, the take on magic. Because, uh, you know, it needs to stand apart. It needs to stand apart from not just movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but movies about magic, action movies, you know, we're competing against all of that uh, in terms of, of, of showing an audience something very new. So that went into every, every thought we had about what we were going to put on screen with magic, with these visuals. It's cool. It, 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 magic is going to come crashing into the MCU in a big way, uh, which is kind of exciting. And a lot of people are asking me, you know, what does this mean now? Magic is in the MCU in, this, in what has felt like a really grounded, uh, earthbound place. And we're like, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of the point. I mean, we don't we're not necessarily sure all the ways it's going to work together or crash together, but that's exciting. We we love the opportunities of those challenges, and we love making the choices in the moment for the best uh, the best things to do in each individual film, and then letting the stories tell us where to go from there. And I think magic is an amazing uh, card to be dealt into the deck. Yeah, Benedict owns his character. He's amazing. He, uh, uh, we'd be on set and there'd be close-ups with him half the time and I had to pinch myself with how much he looked like the comic and how much he looked like uh, those images just walked right off on the screen. But as an actor, he's amazing. As, as he has the depth to go on a journey uh, that this character goes through. You know, uh, a, a lot of our actors, um, a lot of our characters, no one's gone on quite as big of an arc, right? I mean, Tony goes through a big arc, Tony Stark, but there's a lot of the Tony Swagger in Iron Man that, that he was at the beginning, right? He's still, uh, uh, he's, he's learned to use his intellect for something better. In the case of Stephen Strange, he's almost a totally different human being at the end of the movie. And to have a, have a, a, a character go through that big of an arc, to essentially play two roles in one movie, you need someone like Benedict with, with that kind of depth. Tilda is, embodies such an ethereal, otherworldly grace and wisdom. She feels like she uh, has it all figured out in the best possible way, right? Um, and you need someone like that to bring this sort of uh, centuries-old wisdom to the screen. She just carries it when she's on the screen. And uh, she was one of the first people we talked about when we were putting this film together and that talking about that role. And the fact that she agreed to do it was, was amazing. And, and people are really enjoying her performance in the film. It's amazing because, you know, Nice, good reviews are nice, um, but what I really like about people that are enjoying the movie is they're liking what we set out to do. They're sort of liking the DNA of the movie, the weirdness of the movie, um, uh, the big buys of the movie, the things that could have gone really wrong, right? The big swings can also be big misses, so the fact that they seem to be responding to that is extremely gratifying and, and, and kind of a bit surreal. It's like waiting for your exam test to come in as those start to roll in. <laughs> It was really cutting edge. The sequences were all so complex that we had to figure out new ways to do them for each one of them. You know, uh, uh, from our finale, which I don't want to give anything away, it was incredibly complex. Took a long time to shoot because uh, it involved many layers of shooting each layer to, to achieve the desired effect. And with all of these sequences, we, we said we were going to do them, and then there was always that moment of like, okay, what does that mean? How are you going to? How are you actually going to pull it off? And Luckily, we had an amazing team of, of producers and visual effects uh, supervisors and, and stuntmen and uh, uh, production designers that are all so game to, to just sit down and figure it out and say, okay, how do we do the impossible on screen? How do we put magic on the screen and make it believable? Because Scott, uh, from the very beginning, said, if the magic doesn't feel real, if it doesn't feel like it's actually something happening in front of the lens of the camera, this whole movie is not going to work. So it was, it was a big challenge to do that. It's a movie about sorcerers, right? So, of course they can travel over the world in an instant. And you really have to go to those places to uh, uh, put them on screen. I mean, you, you can't fake 
Kathmandu. You have to go to Kathmandu. And the audience can tell when you're in an actual place. Everything about it in every corner of the frame just feels so real and so tactile um, that it, it just infuses the movie with reality that is very hard to fake. So that was important to us, whether it was the streets of New York, the streets of Kathmandu, going to Hong Kong and finding the best streets there. Uh, uh, it really elevates the movie to, again, it's a movie about magic. If the locations don't feel real, the magic's not going to feel real.